like to call to order this Monday, May 2nd meeting of the Finance Committee of the Ascension Parish Council. All members, with the exception of Councilman Johnson, are present. He, I believe, is at work. And uh, I'd like to ask at this time if uh, Ken Dawson would come and lead us in the prayer and fo followed by the pledge. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for protecting us during the recent rain events and allowing the workers of Ascension Parish to perform their duties well in, in protecting the people. We ask for your wisdom as we do the people business tonight, for we take this opportunity seriously and understand that we serve them. We ask that you continue to bless Ascension Parish and give us the wisdom to guide it in the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There, are, there is a time for public comment upon each item on the agenda. If you have something about which you'd like to speak, please sign a comment card with the secretary, and she will make sure that I have that. There are no chairs additions. There is the uh, removal of one item from the agenda. Item number six will not be taken up tonight. We will proceed with our general business, the accept number five, the acceptance of bids for the additions and alterations of the Ascension Galvez. Parish Library, Galvez Branch, Ms. Angel Desitel. Good evening. I just wanted to uh, let you all know that the Ascension Parish Library Board has accepted the recommendation of Mr. Henry Chauvin for the renovation and addition to the Galvez location of the Ascension Parish Library. So does anyone have any particular questions? Ms. Chauvin can review anything. I think there may be some questions. It's at a point after public comment because I, I have several folks who want to speak. So if you all will just make continue to make yourself available, that might be helpful. Okay. And I will, um, before we take a vote on that, or perhaps we should have a, a motion and a second to accept, and then we'll open the public comment we'll period. Chairman. Have a motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. A second. Second by Councilman Todd Lambert. And are there any questions or concerns? Um, Mr. Miss Kell and Kell and Mary Johnson, who will be speaking on your behalf? Mr. Kell Johnson. If you all would maybe just sit right to the side there and let Mr. Johnson express his concerns. I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to speak uh, to the commission tonight. Um, my wife and I, we live at uh, 18044 Autumn Leaves Drive in Prairieville, directly behind the library. Uh, we purchased that property back in 2002, and at that time, we really had no major drainage problems, uh, but in the last few years, uh, we have quite a bit of drainage problems. When we have just a regular rain event, um, it turns into a possible flooding event for us. Uh, we're not in a flood zone, but because of this, uh, a couple of years ago, we decided that we needed to purchase flood insurance. It's, it, it gets that bad. Um, my wife had written to Mr. Rue a while back, and he responded rather quickly to our concerns. And I'm just going to read real quickly what his response was. He said, I looked at your property last week during a rain event. I understand your problem. There are two issues that hamper your drainage. Number one, when the library was built, no drainage swell was put to capture the runoff from the property and directing it away from all of the property to the north. Uh, the water goes directly to your backyard first, 
while trying to get to the road ditches. To compound the problem, the rear of the lots north of the library are very flat with very low slope from the rear yards around the side of the homes and to the front ditches. The front ditches, number two, the front ditches does not have the capacity to handle the flow both from not being large enough and not being maintained properly, especially through the culverts. Um, he went on to say that he <coughs> is the uh, uh, is is with the drainage and and also that the um, I think the uh, roads department typically takes care of that that issue. Um, like I said, just during a during a normal rain event, our yard is just saturated and the ditches overflow, and it begins to move toward our house. Our neighbors, the Landrys, who are here, they receive a lot of that as well. The water doesn't move out, uh, plus it's so much water that it, it has a hard time moving out. To compound that, further down the street before we get to the main drainage ditch, there's something going on there that the drain slows down because like three or four yards from us, there's not much water in those ditches. So there's something going on between our yard and the main drainage canal that won't allow that, that water to move through. Um, I had spoken with one of the engineers. I think he was doing some research uh, for the library with the upcoming construction. And he said that he was actually doing a study um, as to the water retention, that so much water was supposed to be was supposed to be retained. Um, and we just, wanted, we just wanted to make everybody aware of this issue and uh, if we could get some follow-up with it. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Ray Landry? They wanted me to speak for both. Oh, you're going to speak on behalf? Okay, yeah. that's great. Thank you so much no. for, for doing that. We appreciate it. Uh, Ms. Angel, Mr. Chauvin, do you all, can you all address this issue for these uh, constituents who, will be your, who are your neighbors? There? Yes, actually we had... Um, civil engineering work uh, extensively on the property. It, it was parish approved before we proceeded. And basically, we've created the entire lot will be curbed. There will be, all water will be contained and drained uh, out okay. of the library property. It's not going to be going anywhere. Mr. Chauvin can address this. Yeah. Well, we had, um Mr. Glenn Cheyenne's office, and he assigned it to Mr. Jake Lambert. And uh, every project we do, well, every project I've done ever since the pumping station is up, we get drainage engineers to come in and they do an overall drainage plan. And um, but like with Mr. Uh, Lambert, that drainage plan goes all the way to the Amy River. And what happens is uh, we have a curb going around the entire property and there's cuts in the curbs to let the water out slowly. Um, I, I can't think of one project we did and we that uh, that we don't have to do this. And I mean, we. We took the precaution to do it. Now, what happens outside the property, uh, I'm, I'm just not really sure. I mean, Mr. Lambert would be a better person to ask this question. Uh, as far as the uh, the front drainage ditch, it's a culvert, and uh, they're widening Highway 42. That's catch basins. That's, that's the south side. That's catch basins along that area. And there's also catch basins on autumn leaves drive. And uh, we have those curb cuts going to these catch basins. But uh, and, uh, that's about all I know about it. I mean, we get the professionals to do it, yeah. and it's been approved by the parish. So. Uh, and the catch basins are inside the curb on the property. Right. They, it does not go out of the so, so let me ask a question. Are you arguing that this is not happening now, which obviously these folks know it is, or are you saying that this is not going to happen in the future because you're going to do these things that 
rectify this problem? Right. Well, this should address the problem because, um, I, and I was not aware that this was an issue. I know that the lower part of the property in the corner tends to be a little lower than the rest of the property, but the way we are constructing the property at this point in time will involve a physical curb being built around the entire property to maintain all water on site and not allow it to leave the property unless it goes out the drainage <coughs> system. Right. It's installed. Okay. So the theory behind it is that it lets it out slowly. Sure. And it contains it in the parking lot. Okay. Uh, as far as as far as witnessing the actual design I, the only way I could do this is after a heavy rain. Um, so do, mean, we have a, do, do we have this existing curb system now? No, no we do not. No, ma'am. Okay. No. That's, that's, that's what I think I was trying to get part to. Part of the expansion. All right. Mm -hmm. Good deal. So, Councilman Kulak. Henry. <coughs> and on Jill. So you're saying with... with with the remodel and, and, and addition and everything. So you're going to reconfigure a curb around the whole place. That's correct. Not just the remodeled or expanded areas. Right. You're going to reconfigure it to where it curbs, to where it all comes back to 42. It goes into a catch basin that comes back to 42. Okay, some goes to 42, some goes to autumn leaves, some goes to the side, and then some goes to the back. And that's curb cuts spaced all around the property. More of a retention. So it's it's really it's almost right. serving as a retention. Right. So, so it's not just going one point. way. It's it's going on yeah. four sides: north yeah. side, east, and west. And so after this project is complete, you'll be monitoring the effectiveness of this system that you have put in place. Yes, we we, I mean, we can monitor it, but I mean, I'm I'm not going to tell you that that it's not going to throw water, you know off of the property because it, 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 it's designed to do that because if we held all the water, I mean, we'd have like a foot deep. Well, I understand that. Yes, but we don't want a foot deep on on right. Mr. Johnson and Mr. Landry and Ms. Mr. and Ms. Corey. Right. Okay. okay. Any question. other questions, gentlemen? Councilman Dawson. Oh, thank you. Mr. Chauvin, is, is there a drainage impact study or was there any was there any drainage impact engineering done with this project, or is there yes. any required, or do you guys, does anybody know? With the plan, yes, <clears throat> that's a good question. Any, any building, commercial, or building like that has to be, go through the plot plan. They have to show that they're not going to impact, just as a subdivision is going to show that they're not going to impact their neighbors. It is actually against the law to flood your neighbor, so I'm sure the, the building department is telling them they're going to review the plans that their engineering firm showed and accept them. And okay. I think that's what they did on the original part of the uh, library also. And, and okay. this that is something that we do as a parish government. Right. So but am I A commercial building, you have to show where you wa your runoff is going to be. So there was a drainage impact study and it was approved, it was uh, reviewed by the parish. Is that is that correct? Exactly. Okay. That's correct. The first thing we did was to go to the drainage people. And the thing is, oh, you can ask Ms. Angel, I would not touch this parking lot until we had a drainage com uh, impact study because I want to know where the water's going. I mean, if I set this thing up, it might not go the way it's intended to go. So we waited for approval from the parish. And then what happened was is that... Um, the way Mr. Lambert presented it, uh, we followed those exact same elevations on the perimeter and the same elevations all around the building. And we put about 300 more elevations than he had on his plan just to make sure that it, that it works. Could, could I make a recommendation that, that perhaps uh, you guys set up a meeting between Mr. Lambert and, and your neighbors and review that drainage impact study and let him explain that to them? I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Mr. Rue, do you have any comment you would like to make? <coughs> now that this is all yeah. your responsibility. Okay. Yeah, I think <laughs> we can cut to the chase on this. I'll review it myself. It went to the planning 
uh, planning engineers, and a lot of times, unless they have an issue, they don't bring it to us. Uh, my crew and my staff and myself, I will pull the plans, the drainage plans tomorrow. If I got an issue with it, I'll get with Mr. Lambert on it and we'll solve it. So there won't be a problem and we'll be on the same page. Okay. Thank you. Well, Thank still, you. I still would like to see review with the with the neighbors, you know, whatever the outcome of right. it is, so they can understand well, that this is detention and it, and it goes in this place or that place. Exactly. And again, this is what we need to do anyway. Uh, we can review that, make sure what they're doing will uh, accomplish the benefit in the rear part of their property, rear part of the, the, uh, the library. At the same time, though, I've got to do a project on the roads. Uh, so this will coincide with what they're doing, so we do a real project and uh, upgrade the slope of it, get it down to the cross drain and get everything out at one time. So, again, we'll work together to make sure it all fits. Okay. Thank you, Dale. <coughs> any further, any one further other, questions? One question. Yes, Mr. Dempsey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Angel, yes, sir. I, I want to know how hard you had to twist uh, Mr. Chauvin to, to come back out. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to let everyone know, I, I've worked with Mr. Henry. I've, I've been on the Council on the Aging Board for over 16 years. He's completed a lot of good work in his parish. He is, he is I would have to put him up there with the top. Uh, I have no doubt. I, I mean, I have no problem sitting here saying that, hey, look, I know you have concerns back there in, in autumn leaves, but I can promise you this project will be, uh, it will help instead of hurting you. So, uh, Mr. And Chauvin I'm glad. originally built Alves. Yes, so ma'am. You're little, correct. So we had a little leverage to getting back out there. Yeah. The stand. Well, I appreciate you coming back, Henry, to help us out with this. Okay. And look, thank you very much. Good to see you, man. Mr. Lawler. Sorry, I hate to throw a damper on things, but I think the elephant in the room is when it was originally built, there was a drainage plan done. And it said before, it shouldn't have affected these people. And obviously the drainage plan that was done before that was approved <coughs> led to the flooding of their property. Now, I don't really have the confidence now that we're saying we're gonna do another drainage plan that this one miraculously will not affect them. That, that's my biggest concern here. Um, you know, we, we still have water going on to their property. Based on what I've heard, there'll be an opening for water to flow into their property. And if the prior, yes, that, that's what we stated before, if the prior drainage plan was approved but wasn't sufficient, why am I supposed to believe that this one will be? All I can tell you is that we go before the drainage engineers and they tell us that this is what's required. And, and I mean, that's, that's the best we can do. Mr. Rue. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. The, the fact is that when right, this was first built, we didn't have the regulations in place as far as building uh, re detention, on site detention, which is a requirement now. They're making a, a major renovation, so now they've got to comply with our present rules, which is uh, detention of everything on that property. And that's why it wasn't before, and it is now. If you would, not, not you, Mr. Rue. Uh, additions and alterations are we making? Is it just a parking lot? Oh, no, sir. We're adding no. square footage to the facility and um, and adding parking yes. to the to the property also to meet uh, ordinances. And because of that, we needed to address the drainage, and, and we have. For what reason are we adding square footage? Because it's required at this time. The, fa the <coughs> facilities are built based on the population served. This building was built with a 20-year projection. It was built in 1992. The population now being served is exceeding the 20-year projection that was made. So at this time, we <coughs> need to expand the facility. We're adding technology to the facility, meeting room space, study room space, and a variety of other things that are required. When you say required, required by whom? Re well, there's state standards that we need to follow that are guidelines that we follow that tells us what you should be providing as a public library for your community. Now, they're guidelines, so they're not a requirement, correct? Not at this time, no. Yeah. But and, and that's my question. I mean, I've been there multiple times, and I don't see the crowds uh, that are requesting it. I don't see the crowds of people there. I mean, I, I know there are areas that don't have libraries. Could the money be better spent putting libraries in Santa Monica? We have the property. We can get moving on that. 
Well, the, the issue there is that the, Gonzal the Galvez location, part of the problem why you're not seeing the crowd right now is because we've lost part of our parking. So um, I'm getting an awful lot of complaints about lack of parking from the public. So there is a need to provide services, and like uh, as I've stated, it is based on population. What is the cost of this project? Three point three four zero 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 three point three million. million. Yeah. How much would it cost to build a new library in Santa Mar? Santa Mar is going to cost approximately about five million, and we have started setting aside those funds. This year, we reached the funding level to where we can sustain the Santa Mar branch. So at this time, those funds are going into construction for us to build the Santa Mar branch. We anticipate that construction will start on the Santa Mar branch in 2018. Two years from now. I mean, I, it just seems to me that you know, I, I go to the library in Galvez. I live right by there. Most times, there are more people working there than there are in the actual library. And that seems to me just to be a waste of money if we have more employees in the library than we do patrons in the library. Uh, we, re we really don't have that many employees there. But the, well, let me ask you, at 8.30 thing, in the morning, how many employees are there? At 8.30 in the morning? Yes. I would say there's approximately four employees there. Or, or five, usually, because I, I go there and I check that five. Maybe five. That's a lot of employees right. in a public library and nobody's there. Not at 8.30 in the morning, but throughout the day our facility is open and Galvez sees 100 to 200 people a day. How is that calculated? We actually count the people coming through the front door. Based on people walking through the front door? Yes, sir. And that also includes employees that walk in and out the front door, is that correct? Yes, sir. That also includes cleaning crew, is that correct? That's correct. So that 1 to 200 a day is actually reduced by the employees that go in and out cleaning cr crews, people that make trips back and forth to the car. Is that correct? Yes, sir, but the... That, I mean, that's really an inaccurate number. Is anything done to account for that? Not at this time, no. But the thing is, the, the numbers... We don't have the employees running in and out the door all day long. They, they, they come in, they clock in, they may leave for lunch, they come back. So you might have four entrances that's or two entrances. That's 10. 10 percent. That's 10 percent right there. Then you had a cleaning crew, because I've been there before, that comes in. You have a, a group of adults that come in and clean. There were six of them, plus their supervisor that came in. They cleaned. They didn't have any time to go look at books or anything. They left right after they cleaned. So that's six right there. Some of them did go in and out. You have a security guard that I've seen that goes in and out, in and out, talking on her phone, in and out. I counted 10 trips that she did by herself. Mm -hmm. My point is, if you're talking 100 trips, 100 people, at least 30 of those are employees. And I think the numbers are off. I just don't see that there's a need to expand this library where Santa Mar doesn't even have a library right now. It, to me, it, it's a colossal waste of money. And I'd rather be putting a library in another neighborhood where people can use it. Because I do. I go to the library. I check it out. There's not a demand there. There's a, there are more employees there throughout most of the day. And I've seen other libraries. I think we're just overstaffed. I think a lot of money could be saved if we look at staffing and if we look at, hey, let's not expand this library that's not getting the use. Let's, why don't we go expand and put a library in Santa Mar where they don't have a li uh, library over there, do they? No, sir, not at this time. That is, no, I think that's that'd be a better use of the funds. Well, I have to respectfully disagree with you. I see the use that goes into that facility. And uh, I can actually get a literal count for you, if that's what you would like. We have the ability to do that. Now, is there a literal count of people going in and out? Yes. Okay, but that's not accurate. We've already shown that. Well, I will subtract the staff from the count. Well, you, you'd have to subtract the staff, the, the cleaning crews. You don't know how many times they're going in and out. I don't think that's accurate. Can you get an actual count of how many books are checked out and who's checking out books? Oh, we do that continually. Okay, and is that based on just people going to the library? 
Uh, not sure what you mean. Or in, do you go to schools or do you go to uh, homes also? We we do uh, do off-site programs. And how do you do? You count that against your population total. The people you serve. Yes. So that wouldn't be an accurate count. Who do, what library does that get counted against? It gets counted to the library where the location is is at. So it's not people actually going to it. Is my point. And you would count those numbers though. Normally you've been counting those numbers. So if you go serve a home with a hundred people, do you count that as a hundred people going to the library? No, sir. How, do you, how does that count? We count it as an off-site visit, and what is determined at that location is how many people they interact with, where we may go to a home that might have 100 people, but we, we may only work with 10 of the people there. Okay, but my point is that goes back to saying that 10 people went to that library, and that'd be incorrect, that 10 people went to Galvez. I just think the numbers are inflated, and, and purposely so. I don't see the use... I I, I'm sorry. I have to report these numbers to the State Library of Louisiana. I never inflate the numbers. But you don't subtract for employees, do you? No, sir, I don't. And that's not a patron of the library? N well, that's my point. Not, not every I, I, day, I, no. No, I strongly, uh, I have a concern with the way our tax dollars are being used at the library. They're overstaffed. We have nothing in Santa Mar right now. Uh, we're flooding the people that live behind it, and we're going to expand the library. That, it's... Now, we have a lot of other needs. I'd, in the I'd have to right disagree now. with this. So let him finish up. Well, you finish up. I'm, I'm done. Well, you know, Councilman, look, we just expanded the Gonzalez branch out here, and I don't know how many th millions of dollars we spent out here. It's time for Galvez to have its renovation. And uh, look, I, I feel the pe for the people in Santa Mar. We have the property. We will build. I mean. You are going to build a library out there. Yes, sir. They're getting a brand new freshman academy over there right now. Let's keep this on track. Uh, it's time for Galvez to get their expansion. And I'm going uh, to stand by that. I've never heard Council of Ms. Adam. Talking about their own yeah, Thank you, Madam Chairman. And thank both of you guys for your testimony. And uh, is it Mr. Johnson for, for yours? I'd like to return this discussion, if we could, to the drainage issue. And the flooding, which I think is um, tantamount to what we need to be doing. The, the other issue is certainly something worthy of looking at. I'm not sure we have all the data here tonight to do that from what I've heard. So that said, um, the, the letter is intriguing to me that the gentleman testified about, um, is it Mr. Johnson, um, uh, having gotten um, a response from our drainage director, Mr. Bill Rue. Okay. Now our DPD. DPW director, and we've, we've already heard all about that. Mm -hmm. Now, there was two contributing causes I listened to, the first one being for the flooding, an issue with not having a swell ditch on the gentleman's property. So my question is, even if we're going to expand this facility and put something around the perimeter that's going to retain the water and, quote, keep it on site, and, or maybe we not, I, I, I'm not quite sure I understood if some of it's still going to get off or not. In, and whether we've had a drainage impact study or not, going in front of our planning commission, which it doesn't sound like it did, it sounded like it stayed in-house with just our parish engineers. And I have great appreciation also that Mr. Rue is going to look, take this on personally and look at it, and, and, I, and I have some trust in that process. But I'm just curious, should we, do, are we obligated, or maybe Bill, you'd have to come back up here to, to put that swale ditch in that, was, that you, you said would help a lot? Um, is it in a drainage servitude? Is it it's the responsibility of the of the parish? What's what's going on with that? Well, again, I, I don't want to comment too much about it because I haven't had a chance to look at the drainage plan. Uh, but uh, I think we can work together in in putting together a plan to make sure that these that the benefits are to the people uh, north of them. In other words, if the if the all the water is contained on their site and captured and goes to a, an on-site uh, catch basin and funneled to the road ditch or funneled somewhere else, then that takes care of the problem. If the, if the drainage plan shows where the openings actually is in the back of the lot, which funnels the water at a reduced rate, but still funnels the water onto the Johnson's property or property north, right. but then in that case, we may look at a servitude from the 
from the uh, library to actually put a swale through there to capture that runoff, send it down to a side ditch, and on to the front ditch that way. So again, I think we can resolve the issue. Let me look at it. Uh, I can guarantee you that, uh, that whatever happens, it will reduce the flow onto these people's property. Okay, and, uh, and I'd just like to say, if that's the case, then I, I sort of mm -hmm. side with Councilman um, Dawson, who indicated that the public involvement in this mm -hmm. um, step that you're going to take, I think, is, is just absolutely important. We all know that this parish is suffering right now from a lot of public distrust that our drainage and traffic impact studies, quote unquote, aren't worth the paper they're printed on. Um, we have a situation where I'm sure the gentleman who testified tonight is being totally honest as property's flooding. I think, uh, as Mr. Lawless said, we do have an obligation to be sure we don't flood people's uh, property every time we develop anything, be that an expansion to a library, a new whole new subdivision with a lot of rooftops or whatever. So I highly encourage that everybody sit down, parish engineers, you, Mr. Rue, um, uh, the individuals from the library, the Johnsons, whoever else wants to get there, and see if everybody's happy before proceeding forward. And uh, at that point, then God bless everybody. That shouldn't be a problem. Again, we can work with them and make sure that uh, the impact is at least lessened, if not completely uh, solved. Okay. Thank you. We're going to make the motion. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept a bid for the additions and alterations of the Ascension Parish Library. I think we already had that, and that's what we went to the discussion on. Just so sure. having Thank already you, done that, uh, do we have any objections? That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Number skipping number seven, we'll go six. We'll go along to number seven. The amendment to the professional services contract with Mujo Architecture LLC to amend the contract by an additional nine thousand three hundred eighty-one dollars and twenty-five cents. The total contract amount shall not exceed six hundred and seventy thousand four hundred eighty-eight dollars and seventy-two cents. Mr. Mike Inluth, Inluth, thank you. Good evening, uh, uh, members of the committee. Uh, this is to increase the contract, as it says for um, consulting services uh, for the uh, temporary generator install that we had. Uh, we had an incident uh, that required their services to uh, uh, really get us through that and help us with uh, some, a lot of unknowns on the electrical side. And, and uh, this, this $9,381.25 will uh, go uh, in addition to the other two change orders we had, I think it equals around $77,810, and, and that money uh, we will recoup from the uh, real, uh, responsible contractor on the project. So this money uh, we'll be getting back. Motion. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Kluwat, second by Me. Councilman Cagnolotti <laughs> <laughs> to uh, <laughs> take it to, uh, for this um, this amendment, any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number eight, change order number one, Ascension Parish Governmental Complex, Emergency Generator, Total Energy Solutions, LLC, project number ENG1302002, to increase the contract amount by $14,876.45 to compensate for the additional effort beyond the original scope of the work to get the generator load tested and installed correctly. The problem was mitigated in collusion with the Gonzales Gas Company. Total contract amount after the addition is $366,998.45. Mike? Motion. Okay. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Kluot, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Mr. Mr. President? Uh, if this company was paid to the generator, what is the additional cost? The gas line that was run to the government complex from the rear of the property was a one-inch line. And that was done by, by Total Energy? N no, sir. That was, uh, that that was to the meter, <coughs> so that was on the city side, and it was, uh, uh, I wasn't in, dis in the discussions when, when that was, when, when the hospital was, demo uh, when the demolition occurred, and 
and the infrastructure was kind of capped and, and moved around, so we didn't realize the one inch line was going to the meter. And when this generator was being installed, they had quite a few uh, employees that, that were trying to mitigate the, the issue with getting the generator load tested. Uh, and so while they were out there, they had to, uh, they were in the, the yard, in the mechanical yard, uh, repiping and, and trying to get the generator to, to work. Uh, then it was uh, found that uh, there wasn't enough volume going to the gas meter. The pressure was adequate uh, going to the through the mechanical yard, but uh, the pressure going or the volume going to the meter wasn't sufficient. <coughs> what is this for, too? This is for uh, the there's a backup uh, with the the uh, this change order. But uh, this is for all the labor parts equipment uh, for Total Energy Solutions as well as uh, their manufacturer's uh, representative uh, from Cummins. Uh, they had to uh, have him out there an additional uh, couple of days to get this until this got uh, fixed. Still don't understand why the installation is close to City Gonzalez's gas line. That's typically how it happens. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I wasn't involved in in, in the meetings for for why the one inch. Load testing, they should have done all that anyway in installation. They, they, they actually they did. This is uh, for doing it twice, basically. Um, they didn't, I, uh, they didn't put that in their bids to come in and and and, and try to mitigate what the issues were within the mechanical yard. I like to get Bonilla to look at that contract. Just, you know, this is sure. good. Yes, sir. Mr. Bill Dawson. Maybe. Uh, I did read over this a, a pretty good bit. It appears to me, Mike, that <coughs> there was a two-inch line that was downstream of the meter. That's what fed the, the generator. And according to this, it uh, they thought that was incorrect, and so replaced that with a four-inch line, and most of this cost is associated with that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not, not, not entirely true. So before the meter... Or coming to the meter is a, was a one-inch line. No, but I'm talking about downstream of the meter. Downstream within the mechanical yard, um, I'd have to look at this this schematic. Well, according to these according to these paper the, the papers here, then you know mm -hmm. the work was done downstream of the meter. They thought that's where the problem was, and it went back, and and that wasn't a problem. The problem was upstream of the meter with the gas company supply. Right. Correct. So right. I mean, I'm kind of wondering that myself is, you know, why are we responsible for that, but. Well, you know, I'm I'm not an expert on the gas, and and I surely didn't didn't think the the one inch gas line wasn't, you know, sufficient. Uh, you know, when when you get a gas line hooked up to your meter, um, I mean, you you give them the specifications, and and hopefully it works. The meter out there is quite large, and again, I'm not an expert, but uh, I looked at the meter, kind of thought, yeah, we we should be okay with what was there, but uh, the generator is a 550 kilowatt generator you're supposed to load test it for two hours up to the full range uh, I know it's in the documentation as well they, they would get to 400 kW and then anything more would would um, they called it sucking dry the meter I'm sure councilman Lambert knows the terminology there but uh, the boiler wasn't running as well so uh, none of us knew what the issue was and and uh, and we were just trying to mitigate the uh, the problem and, and get this thing uh, running so um, I'm not sure what else uh, could have been done on, on our part but it uh, you know I'm not I wasn't the expert out there with the gas issue. Uh, the, the design was Mujo architecture or his uh, sub consultant 
Mm -hmm. 13. So. We'll, we'll, we'll meet with uh, you, Joe, and, and O'Neill, and give you all a recommendation if you want. Other than that, y'all go ahead. And Mike, didn't you say some of this was going to get reimbursed by the contract? No, sir. I was af I was afraid of getting the getting these mixed up. This is the um, okay. This is for the permanent generator okay. install. Yes, sir. Okay. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I make I make a motion. We approve it based on legal and administration agreeing that is is. Justified. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second to that second. amendment. Substitute motion. A substitute motion, excuse me. Uh, any uh, objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. All right, we will move along to item number nine. A certificate of substantial completion, project number ENG 1302002, Ascension Governmental Complex Emergency Generator. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to defer to uh, legal counsel to see, uh, in light of what the decision was made on the previous uh, agenda item, what uh, the course of action should be on, on this. Should we withhold this uh, contingent upon the decision of... Uh, I think it's a separate appeal. If it well, we're not going to do a change. If we're not going to approve the change order, we're still, if it's complete, it's complete. Right, but... Uh, so the change order was not part of the original deal. Okay. So. Motion. I have a motion second. by... Second. And a second. Mm -hmm. Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 10, the intergovernmental agreement between the Parish of Ascension, the City of Gonzales, and the Ascension Parish Fire District number one for an increase from $100,000 to $120,000 in payment. Mr. O'Neill Parenton. Yes. Um, this, is a, this contract has always been $120,000. In September, the fire board said they wanted to be $100,000. So when it came through with our renewal of contracts, we did $100,000. The fire board now says no. The, the agreement was 120, so we just got to clarify it, and that's what it's so always been. Second. 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 And I've got the minutes of the fire board authorizing yeah. 120. They assist us big time on that. So. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Any yes, objections? Sir. Have a motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Number 11, an ordinance to authorize the Parish of Ascension to purchase property for the Ascension Parish sewer program improvements, Hillaryville, Darrell, St. Elmo areas. O'Neill Parenting. This is a lift station. We need, I think, a 40 by 80 piece of property, and so we've got to do an ordinance to buy the property, so it's for $1,200 and something. So, so moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 12, professional services contract with Lisa C. Bailey, DDS, to provide dental services for Ascension Parish jail inmates. Motion. Ms. Christie's here. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. I this have a motion by Mr. Kluwad. Second. Second by Mr. Cagnolotti. Ms. Burnett, do you have any comment you want to make? Not at this time. Thank you very Thank much. You. Are there any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 13, change order number one in the amount of $31,236.54 for the 2015 road maintenance project, R.J. Daigle for the asphaltic concrete paving, Tacey and, oh, guess who's here? Hi. Hi, Joey. Mr. Tu Mr. Joey Turo's here. Look, expected to see a different face. Um, Mr. Joey Turo. This is for the paving of the uh, uh, fire department parking lot on, on the Galaxy Boulevard off LA-22. Uh, it had to do with grading and, and asphalting that parking lot. So move, uh, Madam Chair. Second. Have a motion by Second. Councilman Todd Lambert. Second, Second by Dawson. Mr. Bill Dawson. Any questions? <coughs> Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 14, change order number two in the amount of $89,083.92 for the 
for the 2015 road maintenance project, R.J. Daigle for the asphalt connector road from the governmental complex to the East Ascension Complex Boulevard. Joey? Uh, these three uh, that are presented tonight, change orders one, two, and three, were presented to the Transportation uh, Committee prior. Uh, number two was incorrectly uh, presented. The, the, amount, the amount was wrong in that it didn't include mobilization. Uh, it, a mobilization item was added uh, to change order number two that covered change order number one and number two together. Uh, so I, I wanted to represent this to make sure that it's clear as to why it's 89,000 tonight and it was Some something less than change. that before. Uh, so uh, the change had to do with the mobilization that was negotiated prior. It was just a clerical area uh, error. Uh, as to why the, the number was less before and, and what it is tonight. But it has to do with that, uh, everything to do with the connector road uh, from the, the new complex to the health unit road, uh, and it includes mobilization for both of those two projects. Thank you. I have a motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, a second by Councilman John Cagnolotti. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Will the secretary please note that uh, Councilman Turner has had to leave. Item number 15, change order number three in the amount of $737,412.62 for the 2015 road maintenance project, uh, R.J. Daigle for Bayou Terrace reconstruction. Motion. Second. I have a second. motion by Councilman Kluot and a second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Any questions? Councilman Bill Dawson. Yeah, uh, Joe, I just, I, I did read that it could have been, it was in a 2013 uh, plan of work and moved to this and in doing that it saved, uh, look to me like about 500,000. Is that correct? No, not that much. It, it did save some, but it didn't, uh, it didn't save quite that much. Uh, but it said the cost in 2013 would have been 1.1 million. Yeah, that. That would only make it like four hundred thousand. Okay, sorry, yeah, Four I did the like math wrong. Four hundred thousand, but yeah. <coughs> one, I wanted to clarify that 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 this is being done four hundred thousand dollars cheaper than what it was originally scheduled to be done. Is that correct? That's correct. And then, can you explain to me why is it that much cheaper being done in twenty sixteen than it would have been in twenty thirteen? Or it's strictly going by the the low bid at the time. The twenty. It was initially under the 2013 package, mm -hmm. and it went with those unit prices in the 2013 package. Right. We just had better unit prices in the 2015 package. Okay. And and we ha we were, by the way, happened to uh, be able to do it more timely uh, because the 2013 package was kind of dragging. We were a little, uh, uh, you know, we still had a lot of punch line, uh, punch items to be finished on the 2013 package. Uh, this contractor was anxious to get started, so they were able to get into it and, and knock it out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Councilman. Chairman, there's also another on. benefit to this. Bayou Terrace Road is parting in the Livingston and part in Ascension, and we made a deal with Livingston that when they do road work, <laughs> there's some other roads that are the same way. We're going to account to them, and they're going to do road work in our parish to match the amount of whatever our, their share of this would have been. Councilman Kluwa. First of all, Joey, thank you. Uh, since you come on board last uh, August, September, whatever, and uh, you know this taking from the other road project with the ability of the co contract on this road project to jump in and get it, uh, I think we got a quality job on that road, a road that needed it very badly. And uh, just to express what O'Neill said, I think we got a better we got a better rebuild. We got a great rebuild on the road, and uh, let you know the road's approximately three miles. Uh, we approximately yes. got a quarter mile of it as you first turn in. That is Livingston Parish. And, uh, of course, we got a road directly across behind Hilltop and that, that Livingston and Ascension on the Amit River. So that uh, there was a, the past administration did sign an agreement with, with Livingston Parish to do pro bono back and forth on equal value. So we look forward to taking care of that on that side of the river when it comes available. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on this. Any further questions? Any objections? 
Hearing none, that motion passes. Professional, no, item number 16, the professional services contract with BFI Waste Systems of Louisiana, LLC, for domestic waste, sludge, type two, grease, biosolids, disposals from all parish facilities, including Lamar Dixon Expo Center, not to exceed $127,950. Mr. Gilbert. So moved. Second. Have a motion by Mr. Oliver Joseph, a second by Mr. Dempsey Lambert. One question. I have a question from Ms. I have a couple of questions. Is that, a, is that in the budget or did it go up from last year? Or it's a carryover. It's a not to exceed. We didn't use as much last year, but this is all the departments that biodiesel fuel or sludge has to be removed from. BFI is the only one that uh, I think, Joan, correct me if I'm wrong, is the only bidder that we had or the only person that we had that would provide the service. And, and we are in budget with. Yes, we are in budget. Up now. All right. Mr. Mr. Dawson. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Bill Dawson. Go ahead, Randy can go. Real quick, Bill, it's uh, waste oils. It is biodiesel fuel, waste oil, and sludge. Any contaminated, we don't use our vacuums for that, so they use theirs and haul it off to the certified waste facility at BFI. So it includes, uh, if we had a spill of a biodiesel tank at one of the pump stations, uh, they would respond to that and pump the fuel out of the abatement and dispose of it. That's it. Have a mo Mr. Bill Dawson. Yeah. So, uh, Bill, did, I didn't see any unit cost in this. So, how is that 127,000? How is that allocated? What's the unit cost for that? Joan, do we have that? I think the uh, the number it was based on the number of trips, estimated number of trips. I don't have the unit cost. Well, how do we pay? Pay by unit cost, not to exceed. <laughs> I think they submit an invoice. I think you submit an invoice based on the mileage they have to go to get it, and there is an actual invoice that you can review to see the work is actually done, is the way it's been done in the past. It was it, last year it wasn't under fleet. It's consolidated this year with all of the different departments putting a portion of the budget in to cover it. Well, normally they charge you so much a pound to dispose yeah, of it. Right. right. That's not about waste. So we don't know how that compares to what it was I previously. Can, I can provide that. To you first thing in the morning. Bill this on it on Bill this on it from what we got. BFI is the only place <laughs> in the Sanchez Pass we don't that, okay? Yeah. And they got all of it right now. And we just renewed their contract. Just shoot me an email, so, Bill. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, we we in fact we had to request that they bid on it because they, there were no bidders for it, I would think, originally. Okay. They got it. Thank you, we said it. Thank you very much. I had a motion, a second. The questions have been resolved. Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 17, the monthly contracts report. Good evening. We have before you the list of contracts that were entered into in the month of April. Everybody take a look at that, and if you have any questions, let me know. Yes, Mr. Dawson. Yeah, sorry. Um, on the wetland permitting, can, can somebody explain what that uh, is? That is that our guy at the core, or wh what is this? Does anybody know? Yeah, that's that's for uh, Steve Callow. Okay. That's correct. Okay. One quick. Mr. Todd Lambert. Oh no. Number one, right there, the four thousand dollars for the appraisal of people's water is we went, we had to get that appraisal. That's part of any, acquiring any piece of property. We had to get an appraisal for our. But for are, our, are we law. on hold with that right now? Is what yeah, I'm, but we got the we had to get the appraisal done. Okay, for the this is what I said. So thank you. All right. Building. Any further questions, Mr. Sadler? Thank you, Madam Chairman, um, Sandra. The um, Item number two, Duncan Associates review of proposed ordinance including impact fee chart. Mm -hmm. Is that the impact, transportation impact fee ordinance we just passed where it mandates in the first six months we have to get that looked at and, um, and upgraded? No, Councilman. That was to, when we were working on the ordinance for proposal, we had a $10,000 contract with them to look at at their uh, sheet that they've done 10 years ago and give some recommendations. So that's for services already rendered. Right. Right. And we have not entered yet into a contract with them or anyone else, which we'd have to do in a bid, right? Right. Um, right. To take a look at that ordinance and update it for 10 years of CPI. 
Mr. President. Council, we we in the process of doing that right now. That ten thousand was not spent. Uh, they charge us like three thousand something on that. But we're getting ready to come to you with the proposal Good. for it to be uh, studied. Good. That, that, for the amount of work done, I know for myself and Mr. Dawson, that sounds like a bargain. The next question then, though, is: Is there any thought at the administrative level, or does this council need it? There, there was some discussion both at strategic planning and at full council meetings about looking into uh, impacts beyond sewer, which we've been having since 2011 and uh, now in 2016, um, uh, transportation, things like, uh, I know Councilman Johnson was interested in fire, Mr. Lawler and myself with recreation and, and even other infrastructure pieces. They, uh, Mr. Dawson, not in here, but he talked to him about looking at fire. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Kluat? Yeah, just uh, one of them is the DOTD maintenance agreement. Our, uh, our public works director there, we, uh, we know that we've been, this has been negative. It's, it's a good impact to the parish, uh, for it, the people that live here because we actually do some services that DOTD probably couldn't do. But for that dollar value, I'm sure you'll be looking into that, uh, Mr. Rue. Absolutely. I know years ago, and I don't think it changed very much, we're usually subsidizing to the extent of 50%. So in other words, it's costing us in the neighborhood of 30 to 50% more than that to, to actually do the work. To do those but services. I, I will look in it, and we'll get a, a cost analysis of it to see it, what the difference is now and see if we get a little bit more money out of them. We got a new director <laughs> up in Baton Rouge, so yeah. I mean, new secretary. So within the last secretary, she worked hard with us, and I know she went fight mm -hmm. one time to try to get some more money in the budget for that, well, probably at least twice, and uh, she wasn't very successful. So and, and I don't it, know if we can do anything with budget it's in Baton Rouge this year, but. Yeah, it's really hard with that because they use statewide uh, right. rates. Mm -hmm. And they're not allowed to go above the state right, right. right rate because mm -hmm. it impacts everywhere else in the state. But I, I still want to look at it and see what the cost difference is now. Thanks, sir. Here. Yes, Mr. Count, Mr. Yeah. Simon. Yeah, um, let, me, let me back up. Um, Mr. President, is it possible we could add um, recreation to the fire look see? Um, clearly, we know we had lanes, uh, excuse me, not lanes for change, better recreation now where we attempted to uh, ask the people for a tax to support, um, as everybody knows, we don't have dedicated funding for recreation. It's underfunded. We have the whatever 16 parks. But clearly as we add these next 7,000 rooftops that are already on the books right now and approved through the planning uh, 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 department and the uh, planning commission processes that um, – you know, another park may be justified or something like that. I mean, I'm curious about as we keep adding these people, just another vital infrastructure piece that can and has been ne uh, neglected and can still be. So again, can we can we take a look at recreation in that mix as well? We can ask the company what they would charge us to. They're looking at what they would charge us to add fire, and we can do that also. But in talking with uh, Councilman uh, Aaron and. Uh, I was arranged in a meeting with uh, Mr. Turner and a couple others to talk about changing some of the ways we do. <coughs> in other words, instead of making uh, a subdivision put a park inside one where you have five subdivisions, maybe put one big one in that area, things like that. But uh, I mean, I know that's not that's not uh, a tax, but that is a way we're looking at possibly changing some of those things like that. But uh, I will come to you all with the proposal. All right. Thank okay. you. Ms. Terry. Uh, yes, Mr. Todd Lane. While we're talking about that, I just want, I guess, want to give my stand on that. Uh, you know, we, we moved on a transportation impact fee, and I, I did vote on it, and we are taking a, quite a bit of heat from it. That was one that uh, we tried to pass a tax, and the, pack, the public voted it down. Well, if we go with fire, we go with schools and sewer it's just going to look more or less like like we the council didn't get the tax passed but we're going to get our money some kind of way so i'm going to let you, let everybody know up here right now that i'm will not vote for another impact fee transportation will be the last one that i vote for because the public uh 
was in an uproar on it, and uh, I'm gonna vote for the you know what the majority of the people want, and that's not impact fees. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> All right, we'll move along to item number 18, a review of the 2016 millage ordinances. year and uh, <laughs> due to that the assessor no did not have the uh, adjusted millage rate in time so I just I wanted you to have a look at it before you it went we to uh, introduction of ordinance it's going to require two ordinances the first one is the one that the assessor adjusted our millage rates due to reassessment and you are required to adopt his uh, uh, reassessment millages and that requires a majority vote of the council. And the second ordinance would be the one whereby if the council chooses to uh, move forward, roll forward, the adjusted millage rate to the prior year's maximum, that is shown on the second ordinance. We repeated the adjusted millage rate, which is required by law, and then you'll see it, the uh, last column is the 2016 levy of the millages. They're not all rolling forward. You can tell the difference between if the millage from like the, uh, the first one, the parish tax, he adjusted our millage down to 2.77. The opportunity for the parish is to move it back to 2.86. The ones that are the same or all the way across are not subject to real uh, roll forward. This requires, like I said, a two thirds vote of the council. Uh, we intend to call the public hearing and adopt the ordinances on July the 7th, so they will not be introduced at the, until the council meeting of um, May 19th. There's a lot of extra requirements of public uh, notices and notifications, and uh, we have to put it on our website if, and things like that. We have to know, uh, notify each councilman in writing. We have to notify our legislative delegation. We have to put it on the radio. So uh, due to that, that, that's why the village adoption takes the length of time it does, especially during reassessment. Thank you very much, Ms. Gwynn. Does anyone have any questions of Gwynn? Uh, I just have one more comment. Fire District number three on both ordinances, if you look towards the bottom, the third and fourth, uh, last to the uh, bottom of the list, fire district number three, their millage, their adjusted millage is due to a company that, per the assessor's office, that recently moved to Baton Rouge, that it affected that millage rate, so it's different from the one you have in your uh, packet right now. It's going, the adjusted millage rate is 9.35 instead of the 8.41, I think it was. Six one. Six one. Okay. Councilman Joseph. I, I know you, you're stating state law and all that other stuff, but the public voted for those 10 mills, and he had the right to adjust them? The, the electorate voted for 10 mills. Yeah. Yes, reassessment. If your property values go up, the, he has to adjust the millage rate to equal the same amount of money as it produced in 15, in this case, 2015. So if your property values go down, then he adjusts the millages up, and that happened on the west side of the river. To deliver the same amount of money. Yeah, to yeah. deliver the same okay. amount of money. But because, and then the law states, you know, because of the uh, electorate voted for these millages, you have the opportunity to roll forward. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for that report, Ms. Gwynn. Number 19, budget amendment number four, approval to introduce an ordinance to amend the 2016 budget. Good evening. You have before you the ordinance for budget amendment number four, which reads as follows. An ordinance to amend the ordinance approving, adopting, and appropriating the 2016 operating and capital budgets for the Parish of Ascension adopted by the Ascension Parish Council on the 19th day of November 2015. Section 1. 
The Ascension Parish Council hereby ordains that the ordinance approving, adopting, and appropriating the 2016 operating and capital budgets for the Parish of Ascension is hereby amended, approved, and appropriated as follows. Operating budget, general fund, general administration expenditures, professional services for strategic consulting and advocacy services, an increase to the budget of $90,000. Maintenance fund expenditures, major repairs for the installation of the polyurethane roofing system for the building <coughs> in the back of the Ascension Government Complex building, an increase to the budget of $84,000. A motion by Councilman second. Kluot, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any <coughs> questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. <coughs> Item number 20, the sales and use tax report. You have before you your normal sales and use tax report. This is collections for the month of March, which represents February sales. And you can see by the uh, figures in the middle column that the month-to-month -month comparisons in all three districts were affected by a rather large audit in 2015. All three districts were up year-to-date and also compared to the budget on the right-hand side. <coughs> we're still uh, concerned after the CF industry completes their construction project payments. But a few good news is we've had three uh, announcements for uh, expansions in late 2015 and this year. So, hoping for more. <laughs> and then the second page is the normal bar chart that you see each month. And the pie chart on the next page, you can see using just our one cent sales tax, just to try to give the council a depiction of where the revenues are derived from, you can see that from the pie chart. The petrochemical industry and their, their major suppliers are in the purple, and consumer retail, motor vehicle sales, and business to business. And on the last page is the history chart, historical chart for all three of our districts. And you could see that we're a little above where we were in 2015. Same time frame. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer any. Yes, Mr. Bill Dawson. Hey, Mr. Blow, <laughs> I'll ask you again. But you told me <coughs> privately that, that you had had some conversations about uh, earmarking these. Right. Uh, Non-recurring uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. Taxes with right. our sales tax administrator. Okay. And he was going to, like I reported, <coughs> see what you know he could come up with. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Quinn? Quinn is looking at petrochemical industry right now at that fifty-nine percent mark. We've seen it go down to forty-nine, fifty-one. And things like that and uh, so I think we may come a time uh, when we, we pause for it to go back down a bit yes I mean you know compared to that two billion dollar expansion you know it's it's got to go down but uh, you know like I said there's three announcements now that yeah will help that from not going mm -hmm. down as far as it Mm -hmm. would have and maybe if there's a few more <laughs> we'll come up to back up to the two billion we're over a million two or three with the three announcements it's based on the uh the alternatives that they have for us going back to tax breaks i know in in, in definitely in baton rouge there's some strong talk about you know how tax breaks are being given out and then people looking at the pill program and you know right so you know we we may see people at our doorstep a little bit more, mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah, thinking with the state cutting back, you know, I'm not yes. sure that's going to be the issue if they're not going to give us any tax breaks. Mr. Lawler. I would just like to reaffirm uh, Councilman Dawson's request. Uh, 
I guess, separate, separate the non-recurring funds. Uh, it, it seems like we're riding a bubble right now, and that bubble will burst. No bubble goes on forever, and we need to be prepared for that financially. And right now, we're living on a bubble, and the time's going to come. Uh, just yeah, that's, uh, if you look at the budget comparison, you know, we've always budgeted con uh, conservatively, so, you know, and we're operating according to our budget, not according to these revenues right now, so that's going to help. No, I understand. I just, I'd like to see it separated out so we could get a really good idea of it and let our constituents know that this, this is where it's coming from. This is one time. This is going to end one day. You know, CF Industries ended. Everything's going to end eventually, and we're always hoping for the next thing. Well, if the next thing doesn't come, that's going to create a real problem. Thank you. You're right. Any further questions? Okay, hearing none, let's move along to the revenue and expenditure report. Ms. Amanda Barada. Good evening. Before you are the monthly reports for March 2016. Page one revenues are at 18.57%, and page two expenditures are at 21.51% at 25% of the year. On page three are charts that compare year-to-date revenue and expenditure for both operating and capital to the budget. Page four and five gives you a brief explanation of the funds that are highlighted on page one and two that are under the budget for revenues and over the budget for expenditures by 5% or more. And the last page reflects all checks issued in March over 100,000, and the total of these checks are $5,389,470.84. Once you have time to review the report, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Mr. Dawson? <laughs> Sorry, but, and I probably should have asked uh, Gwen this, but you talked about the audit. Uh, in 2015, and, and I see a note in here about this also. Can you shed a little more light on this? What the, what happened? There was is there some reallocation had to occur because of that, or because of this audit? Yeah. No, it was just a, a, a you know when you have a large audit, it throws these figures off too. And what we we'll go see. through is <coughs> so it was only done in a comparative sense. Right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Jimson. The, uh, the levy certification, this is this is the total, this is the final payment, <coughs> the 110,000 for HMTP. No, I don't think it's a final payment, but I can double check it and Thank you. let you know for sure. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? I just have a Mr. Wallace. I know it's a strange thing. Is there any way to get these documents that when we look at them, they turn the right way <laughs> on the computer? <laughs> Yeah, because we're <laughs> because if you if you it's like this, but if I turn it like this, it does like that, and it just a constant struggle. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Check with IT. I'm trying to stay, you know, computer. I don't, I don't figure this out. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm not the only one that struggles with this. <laughs> Hard we'll to read them with your with head that. turned we'll check sideways. With IT and see if we can get that to work. For okay, you. I mean, make us <laughs> scan them in. I think it's a scanning issue. Yeah. Mr. Satterley. Well, I, I, I'm not technically inclined to even try this, but I, I believe if it's like an iPhone, and these are iPads, right? <laughs> there's, there's in the preference menu, you can turn off the rotating device so that if you turn it off, Aaron, then you turn your thing physically, it will turn in the orientation you wish. Didn't, didn't know that, but I'll try it. Um, you might want to check with Brandon O'Day on that. I love it professor. when the old man answers a question. <laughs> <laughs> a technical one. Thank you. I don't mean that with any disrespect. No, no. no that's, that's fine, Madam <laughs> Chair. <laughs> My wife thinks I'm very old. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't figure all the technical no, stuff out either. 
All right. If there are no further questions on the revenue and Let's expenditure report, we, we will move quickly to item number 22 that, to accept the lowest responsive bid. Ms. Joan Shivers. Move. Second. Chairman. I have a motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, a second <coughs> by Councilman John, John Cagnolotti. Any questions? Mr. Dawson. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Ms. Shivers, I did. I wanted to just, uh, you know, we talked about single bids and only having one responsive, and she did show me some of the work that she had done trying to get another bid on this, and, you know, maybe if you could do that briefly, Ms. Shivers, is talk about how many people you contacted trying to get the extra bids on this. Yes, we did. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, next month, it, it will be attached uh, to the recommendation. Okay. For MST Enterprises, Pine Bluff, Bear Industries, Coastal Bridge, and S.J. Blue, Garrico the second. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Joan, very much for that thorough work. And I'm sorry there was only one, one respondent, but we uh, obviously must go with that respondent. Are there any objections? Before the vote, I would like the secretary to make a note that Mr. Kluot had to step out to take a phone call, and so he is absent from the, from the dais. <coughs> any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. On April 26, 2016, the Purchasing Department received one bid for two used John Deere 6430 standard cab 16 by 16 power quad plus with bingo series boom mower. After review, the Purchasing Department and Nisa Ascension Drainage recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid submitted by Covington Sales and Service. So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Set Satterley, second by Councilman Lawler. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. On April 26, 2016, the Purchasing Department received one bid for a used John Deere 7230 premium cab, 16 by 16 power quad plus with boom mower. After review, the Purchasing Department and East Ascension Drainage recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid submitted by Covington Sales and Service and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this equipment. So moved. I have a second. motion by Councilman Satterley, a second by Councilman Cagnolotti. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. On April 26, 2003, 16, the Purchasing Department received four bids for approximately six Gator Well trailer pumps with 24-inch PTO. After review, the Purchasing Department and East Ascension Drainage recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid submitted by Thomas Pump and Machinery and to authorize the parish president to enter into any applicable agreement or contract for this equipment. So moved. I have a motion by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman John Cagnolotti. Any questions? Any objections? Hearing none, that motion passes. Item number 23. Move we adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned.